Are you interested in Vero Beach, but you're just not familiar with the area? You don't know where to look or where to start? Well, one of, the people's, one of people's most common anxieties is the fear of the unknown. If that's the case, then this is just the video for you. Stay tuned because I'm gonna take you through four really important areas you should know about Vero Beach, Florida. My name is Rachel Carroll and I run a real estate team here in the Space and Treasure Coast of sunny Florida. I've lived here for the better part of 10 years and sold real estate for just as long, helping almost a thousand families now. Uh, I'm actually not from this area. I was born and raised in Western North Carolina. So when I moved to Vero Beach and shortly thereafter started selling real estate, I really had no idea where I was and I had to figure out how to make my way and get my bearings. So I can relate to those people who get in touch with me who aren't from this area or are new to the area and not sure where to start. I see you. If at any point you wanna pick my brain, please get in touch. All of our contact information is in the description below. Vero Beach is a lovely quaint city nestled along the Atlantic coast of Florida, about halfway between Cape Canaveral and West Palm Beach. It is considered the northernmost part of the Florida tropics and features really great quintessential tropical weather year round. I've got an entire playlist dedicated to Vero Beach if you want to check that out. So here are the four important areas of Vero Beach you should know about. And really the reason that I chose to share these with you in this video um, is because I feel like I haven't covered them already in some of my other videos about Vero Beach. And I do think it's helpful to kind of fill in the gaps and touch on a couple of the different particular areas here that you may want to know about. The first area is what we call the city. It makes up the middle of Vero Beach on the mainland and a few main things you should know about the city versus the rest of Vero are that if you live in the city, you're going to be pretty close to most conveniences like Target, Walmart, chain restaurants, various shopping, Home Depot, parks, the downtown strip, all of those are very close. You'll also want to know that the city has its own utilities set up for water and sewer. So if you live within the city limits, you will utilize their services versus Indian River County utilities like everywhere else in the county. There really isn't much of a difference in service or price to be honest. Uh, FPL will be your electric provider and that used to be one of the biggest issues um, with the city versus the rest of the county. The city electric was very expensive, but that's really not the case anymore. One of the main things you'll want to know about uh, living within the city limits is that uh, the city limits does have short-term rental restrictions that limits you to renting your home for 30 consecutive days or more. So if you're looking to purchase something and have it as a vacation rental, you may really need to focus your efforts outside of city limits if you want to do everything by the book. Some of the well-known communities within the city are McCanch Park, Vera Beach Country Club, the Historic Arts District, uh, the condos and townhomes along the Indi uh, Indian River Boulevard, uh, the Fingers, Royal Park and Royal Palm, and a large portion uh, south of Route 60 of older homes from like the 60s that are typically smaller, um, solid, charming homes. The city limits also include a portion of Beachside, encompassing Central Beach, Ocean Drive, South Beach, and Rio Mar. The next area I want to touch on is Central Vero, which is actually west, but we call it Central because, I don't know, why not? It's out near the mall just to give you a landmark. This area is going to have a ton of conveniences very close by, like within a few minutes drive. Now, if you're not fami familiar already with Vero Beach, it is a driving city, so you're going to need a car to get around. But by car, everything is going to be very close and convenient in, in the central Vero area. Everything but the beach. Now, I already mentioned the mall. Um, you'll also have some chain stores like Target, Walmart, Marshalls, Big Lots, uh, furniture stores, chain restaurants like Outback, Chipotle, pizza and ice cream places, barbecue, just to name off a few. Uh, Publix, Pharmacy, Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, pretty much all you need is right in this area. 
Surrounding that uh, is all residential neighborhoods in Central Vero. You're gonna find a lot of HOA neighborhoods, but you will also find homes with larger lots um, in areas like Doctors Row, as well as some larger homesteads with acreage. Just to rattle off a few more of the more known communities, you'll find Park Lane Estates, Trillium, Point West, uh, I already mentioned Doctors Row, Indian River Farms, uh, Polo Grounds at Point West, Sixty Oaks, Lake in the Woods, Woodfield. Uh, there's really too many to name them all. Central Vero is also going to offer you easier and quicker access to I-95, Interstate 95, if you need that. The next community I'm going to talk to you about is Vero Lake Estate. Vero Lake Estates is very far northwest um, in Vero Beach and a lot of people argue that it actually should belong more appropriately to Sebastian. However, if we're going by zip codes, it does fall into the Vero Beach zip code. You're going to find both paved roads and dirt roads here in Vero Lake Estates and a mix of different single family homes in terms of size and style. Most of them are pretty traditional looking homes ranging in the three to four bedroom range. And you're gonna find a mix of different size lots. So you can get the standard like 0.23 acre lot all the way up to double and triple size lots in Vero Lake Estates. I would describe this area as more of a rural or country type of vibe. As somebody who comes from a more rural and country town originally, um, it does give me that vibe. A lot of the homes in Vero Lake Estates are on well water, so that is something that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. If you are in Vero Lake Estates, you're really gonna wanna go to Sebastian for all of your conveniences and like needs and grocery shopping, eating out, um, most of the things like that. And the great thing about Vero Lake Estates is that there's no HOA, so you can pretty much do what you want out there. You can have your boats in the yard, you can have your RVs, you can have really whatever you want going on in your property and with your house there. So that gives you a lot more freedom and options. Because it's a bit out of pocket, Vero Lake Estates actually is more affordable than other parts of Vero Beach for the size of home that you can get. Okay, so the fourth area that I'm going to talk to you about is Indian River Shores, which is in the north part of the island in Vero Beach. So it's on the barrier island, just north of 7-Eleven, um, the Village Beach Market, and like the tracking station beach access. Indian River Shores shares a zip code with Vero Beach. So it is still 32963, however, they kind Kind of govern themselves so they have their own fire department they have their own police department um, they have their own building department and it's really just an extension of the island in vero beach but what you can expect is some really beautiful homes so you're gonna find a handful of different condos as well as single family island homes as you go north on the island it's also home to the very exclusive John's Island Club, and typically it is a quieter part of the island, a little sleepy or a little more quaint, I would describe it. And the beaches are not frequented by a lot of public traffic, so the beaches feel very exclusive and very private, and that's really something that's nice about Indian River Shores. All right, so I know I said I had four areas for you to know about, but I'm gonna throw in one more bonus. So the south part of Vero Beach's Barrier Island, I personally consider this to start around 17th Street Bridge and go south from there all the way until you reach the line for like Fort Pierce or Hutchinson Island is what they call it. Um, this is like around where Round Island State Park starts. So you're gonna have some really great neighborhoods, um, almost entirely single family island home neighborhoods, either on the east or the west side of A1A. So the east side of A1A is going to be very easy, easy walking distance to the beach. Um, I would actually call it a stroll to the beach, which is really, really a nice quality of life. And you're definitely gonna pay for that convenience <laughs> So be prepared for that. On the west side of A1A, again, it's a walkable, but I would say more of like a bike ride to the beach. Um, it, really anywhere you are on the island west of A1A. You do have to cross Highway A1A, which is somewhat busy with traffic all throughout the day. So that is something to keep in mind. Some of the more popular communities that are well known on the South Island area are going to be Castaway Cove, 
Um, you have the moorings. Um, you're gonna have so many handfuls of those like very small uh, one street neighborhoods all down the island that are gonna offer their own little HOAs or deed restrictions. Some are gated, a lot of them are not gated. And as you get south of the moorings, you're gonna find that you get really into the estate part of the island where you have these beautiful mansions and magnificent estate properties. And some of them run uh, from the ocean all the way to the river. Some of them are just on the ocean side, but they really are very exclusive and quite magnificent. So if you're looking for more information about Vero Beach, where to live, what areas may fit your needs the best, give us a call. You can always check out my other videos on this channel. I also have a playlist all about Vero Beach with all of those great informational videos. And you can also find us on Google, the Carroll Home Team, Vero Beach Realtors, and check out all of our awesome five-star reviews. We currently have, I think, well over 150 of them now. I also wanna mention that calling us does not obligate you to buy a house or even work with us, but it does start you in the right direction for finding your right home here and getting connected to a team of excellent, highly motivated full-time realtors who strive for excellence in what we do. So give us a call and go click that subscribe button before you forget.